going on guys? It's Brandon here with Roadrunner Sports and today we're talking about the Adidas Solar Boost 3. I've ridden all three versions of this shoe and I gotta say this one's my favorite for a couple of reasons and this shoe has definitely gotten a little bit more stability than it has in the past but it's definitely still a max cushion neutral shoe. You're gonna wanna stick around. All right, so with the Solar Boost shoe, let's talk about the Boost first. We have a full Boost midsole like we have in the past, which is extremely comfortable. As always, they've added 20% more Boost than they have in the previous version. I'm wondering how they continue to do that, but I'm assuming it's they're re-engineering the Boost technology to make it more lightweight, but still give you that same responsiveness. I wouldn't say that this has a bigger uh, stack height or a bigger feel than the shoes in the past. It certainly didn't feel that way. Um, this does have a ton of Boost, but not as much as the Ultra Boost 21, which I reviewed a couple months ago. Um, this shoe is also labeled a max cushion shoe as well as the Ultra Boost, but if you're putting them side by side, the Ultra Boost definitely has more cushion and this is gonna give you a much more responsive ride. And there's differences in the midsole and how your foot sits in it, which is gonna be something that you're gonna to wanna to look for if you're comparing these two shoes. So with the Solar Boost, you're gonna have a more traditional heel to toe drop, which is gonna give you a ride that you're pretty well used to. With the Ultra Boost, you're definitely gonna have a different type of ride because your heel sits into the foam a little more in the back and it has more of an S curve. So enough with the Ultra Boost comparisons, let's get to the Solar Boost and talk about where this shoe really shines. One thing that you gotta say right away when you talk about the shoe is the comfort. It is absolutely one of the best out of the box comfort shoes that I've had in a long time. Mostly because of the interior of the shoe. The upper is made with an engineered mesh, as most shoes are these days, but the inside of the shoe has like the silky neoprene lining and you just glide right in. It feels great. And you can see here that the heel counter is really soft. They've had this in the past shoes, where the heel counters had almost no support. It's been pretty elastic and responsive to you, but on the interior of the heel counter, it does stay pretty sturdy all the way up until about this middle stripe, and that's where you're gonna have the, the give and be able to slip into the shoe. You're not gonna have any rubbing on your Achilles, and it's gonna be great for your day-to-day -day comfort if you wanna wear this just as a shoe for walking around as well. I found that in the past, I was always scared, and I, I was a little bit scared with this one too, that I was gonna slip out of the shoe when I was running, but you don't have that problem at all with this shoe. It really stays responsive and locked onto your foot. And that silky smooth interior that has you slide right into the shoe isn't an issue for sliding out of the shoe because they have so much cushion here in the heel counter. It's really robust, so on the inside of it, they have cushion on both sides of the ankle. So once you're in, you're not gonna have the problem of sliding out of it. Another thing I like about the upper is the tongue is like this neoprene type material and it is really, really comfortable. So you're not gonna have any hot spots from this rubbing on your, on your foot, the front of your ankle. Um, it just feels really comfortable. Overall, this has a great on foot feel to it and you're not gonna have any issues with the fit. I'm a size 12 and I found that this did run true to size for me. I know that Andy, the FOD runner on his YouTube channel says that he sized up half a size. So you might wanna go check out his review and see if that's a concern that you have as well. But for myself, I found that they ran true to size. On the upper as well, you have a lot of overlays that are gonna help with the reinforcement. It's gonna give the shoe a lot more structure and you're gonna find that it's gonna keep your foot more aligned. And speaking about alignment, we have to talk about the new solar guide rails that go all the way around the shoe, a full 360. Um, what these are gonna do is they're basically just gonna keep you more on top of the shoe, on top of the, the midsole, instead of kind of spilling over. It doesn't quite provide enough stability for me to warrant this as a stability shoe. Essentially, it's gonna give you a bit of an extra stability for when the road's a little rocky and straightening out your gait when your form slows down a bit. So your foot is gonna sit in the middle of the shoe and when it tends to slide off of the shoe, or you have some uneven terrain, these rails on the side are actually gonna keep you on the middle of the shoe, so that's gonna be really great for you. Um, like I said, I didn't feel a ton of support and stability on this, but that's just because it wasn't intrusive on my run. I didn't have those issues, but when you are running on uneven terrain, this is gonna keep you more aligned and on top of the shoe. So moving on to the outsole, we have the awesome Continental Rubber as always, and we know this is gonna keep you locked on to the road. I mean, that's what they use on car tires. So if there's grease on the road, or it just rained, you're not gonna have any slipping problems. Uh, fortunately for me, but unfortunately for this review, it wasn't raining, so I didn't have a chance to really test it out. But in the past, I haven't had any issues with the Continental Rubber or how long it lasted. 
Another update on this shoe is that they've gotten rid of the torsion plate that used to be in the middle of the shoe and they've installed a linear energy propulsion system. It's basically just an upgraded torsion plate that's going to give the shoe a lot more stability and torque on it. So when you're turning, you're taking those turns or when you're pushing off the ground, you're going to have more responsiveness and it's just an upgrade to the past system. So you're not going to notice any intrusivity on your runs. Overall, this was an awesome shoe and I want to talk a little bit about the overall ride of it. So the overall ride of the shoe was awesome. You have a ton of cushion with all this boost in the midsole, but you do get a little bit of responsiveness. Like I said, it's not as cushioned as the Ultra Boost, so you do get more responsiveness in this shoe, I would say. And I would rate this for anywhere with your medium to long distance runs. For a shorter distance run, I might go with something a little snappier, but for long distance and medium distance, this is going to be a great shoe to take on your runs. It's going to be really reliable with that boost material and you have the continental outsole, so this is definitely meant to be a daily trainer. It's going to last you a long time. So, as always, if you want to try this shoe out, I'd go ahead and sign up for the Roadrunner Sports VIP Club. You get 90 days to test run this shoe. So you can put as many miles as you want onto them, and if it doesn't work out for you, send it back to us and we'll find you a better shoe that fits your needs. And if you're ordering online, you get free shipping on all your online orders, so make sure to check that out. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in to my review of the Adidas Solar Boost 3. I'm Brandon, and I'll see you on the road.